As we learn more about President Biden's plans for his first days and weeks in office, we want to take a deeper look tonight at the impact and the agenda uh, on some different issues that lie ahead for the new president. And we're covering both sides this evening. Uh, Howard Gutman joins us. He is a former U.S. ambassador to the Kingdom of Belgium under the Obama administration. And we'll also be joined by Joe Grogan. He served as the assistant to President Trump and director of Domestic Policy Council. Uh, ambassador Gutman, we're going to start with you tonight and let's begin with COVID-19 and economic relief. Uh, the package has been laid out. We're talking $1.9 trillion. Uh, to pass the Senate, 10 Republicans would have to defect. That is not going to be an easy task that lays ahead for President Biden. Some Republicans already are laying the case that the package is too expensive, that it is massive spending without accountability. What challenges lay ahead for Biden? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, Marnie. Uh, as you know, Joe Bart Biden is the ultimate deal maker. He is as centrist as the Democratic Party has. Uh, I think the nation understands that we have uh, a pandemic that is unprecedented. Probably the biggest mistake we made was to politicize a pandemic that's killed 400,000 people, um, which became a sign of who you supported politically as to whether you could keep a safe distance or wear a mask. Joe Biden will turn down the rhetoric uh, and turn up the safety, and I think ultimately he will get a deal because that's who he is, and the deal is in the, in the interest of all Americans. Let's turn now to immigration reform. President Biden supports an eight-year path to citizenship for immigrants without legal status, refugee admissions, and also technology to patrol our borders, as well as reinstating the DACA program. Uh, again, this is an uphill battle with a 50-50 Senate. Critics of the president's plan say total amnesty is a non-starter. Immigrants coming illegally into the U.S. are taking our jobs. What is the compromise here? So, Marnie, again, you have to differentiate between what the president can do through executive action and what he would need legislation. So I think the immigration reform will be one of evolution, not revolution. I think we will have the dreamers already have four more years through executive action. We will hold off on um, deportations for a while. We'll expand asylum. Um, we will change our border wall to uh, relying on technology. And then ultimately, with the support of Silicon Valley and the like, we will again get a compromise immigration bill at some point made by Joe Biden, who's the ultimate deal maker. In terms of cultural policies, abortion always a hot button issue. President Biden is expected to quickly reverse several of the Trump administration's policies on abortion, including banning federal funds for foreign and national health organizations that promote and provide abortion. Pro-life Americans concerned about the president's actions on abortion. They call his positions radical and also out of step with many Americans. Uh, your response and if he'll be able to accomplish what he sets forth. So again, most of the abortion issues that he can reach on the federal level are really symbolic. They may cause the pro-life forces um, to complain, but the ultimate abortion um, doctrines and principles come from the Supreme Court. They were adopted by state law and ruled on their constitutionality. And we're talking about messages around the, around the edges. Uh, that's a side issue compared to what faces our nation. Uh, the COVID pandemic, recovering economically from doing so, uh, restoring our, our motion going forward and working as a country rather than as two armed camps. And finally, I want to get your thoughts on climate change. President Biden's agenda, uh, as he set, forth, he set forth, he plans to rejoin the 2015 Paris Agreement. We heard him just say that on climate change, revoke a permit for construction of the Keystone Pipeline, and also push for 100% clean energy by 2050, of course, through net zero emissions. Some argue that the president's plans will increase energy costs and slow economic growth, and instead the focus should be on innovation in technology. How do you respond to those concerns when it comes to climate change in the debate? So swelling economic growth is just a, a misunderstanding. There are more jobs created in alternative energy this year than in oil and gas. So in fact, going to alternative energies is pro uh, the environment, uh, pro the economy. And remember, the places most threatened by uh, the climate change right now, Texas, Florida, Florida has parts in the Keys perennially underwater. Houston is threatened every day. The military base in Norfolk is threatened. Um, so 
the places that are threatened are not Democrat or Republicans. They are, they're more Republican. Uh, climate change, coastal protection, flooding uh, doesn't, doesn't look at the right or the left. It just looks at threatening America. It is well understood to be probably the fifth most important national security problem we face. And that's not a Democrat or Republican problem. If Houston gets flooded out again, it won't look to whether you, who you voted for when the rains hit. In fact, many call it an existential threat uh, to our planet. Uh, we appreciate your time, Howard Gutman, ambassador to Belgium during the Obama administration.